All right, I'm actually going to start this video off a little bit differently than usual. Uh, I'm going to start this off with something that you can do to amaze and astound your friends. Uh, not that you're allowed to go see your friends, but should that ever be something that you're allowed to do again, uh, this is how you would do it. Uh, so this is this is a trick that I've seen um, used at like various parties and stuff. Uh, usually, and, and it it's, doesn't work as much anymore because like with YouTube and like Reddit and stuff, everybody's seen this trick, but it used to work a little bit better. So usually the question, the thing that somebody says is, hey, see this, uh, this spoon, this uh, fork, and this toothpick? I want you to balance all of them on the edge of this cup, but you're not allowed to touch the cup with more than one object. So then people start trying to like carefully balance it uh, all on top of things, uh, and, and, and it fails horribly. Uh, so there's a trick here, uh, obviously. The trick to it, and, and it's going to hopefully segue well into our lesson, uh, is I'm going to stick my fork and uh, spoon together, uh, and then I'm going to stick my uh, my my toothpick right here into the uh, between them. Uh, and finally, uh, they should, if I did my job right, it should balance pretty well. Right, give me a sec. It takes just a second to get it centered just right. Man, this is embarrassing. There we go. Uh, and you can see that that's balancing. Uh, and I'm hoping you guys get kind of a good view uh, of this. It looks weird. It doesn't seem like it should balance. Uh, it's balancing like right there, but you can see that like the fork and the, and the spoon, they're over here. Like all of the mass, it seems like is at this location, even though, but, it, but it's balancing obviously. So that's the first party trick that I wanna show you guys. Uh, this other party trick is way less exciting, uh, but still very interesting from a physics perspective. So I have a broom right here. I should probably zoom that and go back. Uh, so I have a broom right here, uh, and I'm going to find the center of mass of this broom, uh, but I'm going to do it magically with my eyes closed. So here we go. With my eyes closed, I'm going to find the center of mass. I'm just sliding my hands inwards. And you can see that sometimes it's moving with one hand and sometimes it's move, letting the other hand move. I'm not really doing anything except moving my hands slowly towards each other. But you can see that I've now found the balance point. Uh, uh, oops. Okay. Ah, it's about there. Uh, so I found the balance point of this broom with my eyes closed. But interestingly, or, or importantly, it's really much, much closer to the, uh, to the bristle end than it is to like the, the end of the handle. Uh, so here's the center of mass right here, right where it's balancing. So both of these demonstrations are things that talk about centers of mass. Um, and so hopefully now that you're super interested in this because of my cool tricks, uh, your, your brains are primed to learn all about centers of mass. So the, the, the big fact, the, the scientific definition of a center of mass uh, is that it is the point closest to all mass of an object. Oops, an object. Uh, so what that means is basically if you picked a point and you traced like how far it is to every like atom, every piece of mass of your object or your system of objects, uh, the point that's like the closest on average to all of them is the center of mass. Uh, so that actually, uh, this one probably is the easiest one to see it on at first. Uh, imagine that you have like some kind of crescent shaped object. Um, and, and in fact, that's what this was, a crescent shaped object. Uh, and in this object and in, in the one that you see on screen, uh, the point that's the closest to the center of mass or to all the masses is probably, I don't know, around there. Uh, you can see that like it's close to all those points. Uh, and I did put it slightly above because there's no mass here that it has to be close to. Uh, so it's slightly above like the center of it if it was a circle. Um, so there's the center of mass. And just like uh, the, the, the spoon and fork uh, uh, system that I just showed you, uh, this thing here, the center of mass is not, uh, is, it's, it's here, right where the toothpick was, was balancing on the, the rim of the cup. Um, and that's because there's a lot of mass near the ends of the fork and the spoon. There's still some out about back of the handles so the center of mass is close to the, the big spoon and fork part, uh, but then pulled downward slightly because of the handle's over here. 
So it doesn't go either direction because it is balanced pretty well on either side. Uh, so that puts the center mass there. Uh, if we're looking at this, this uh, system of these two blocks that are connected by like a rigid rod or something, the center of mass would definitely be uh, along this center line here, but it's going to be closer to the massive object than it is to the, to the smaller object. Now the massive object center of mass is there, the smaller object center of mass is there. This thing is four times bigger than that thing, so it should be, um, I don't know, about there is probably the center of mass. Mathematically, you guys aren't really going to worry about calculating centers of masses uh, unless it's something pretty simple to find. Um, the real skill you want to develop is just being able to kind of eyeball, you know, it should be closer to here than it, than it is to there. So the last one we want to do is this triangle. Uh, again, the center of mass will have to fall along that line of symmetry. It's always along lines of symmetry, uh, but I don't have a line of symmetry anywhere else on this because um, my base is four and my side lengths are not four. Uh, so um, I, I can't draw my other lines of symmetry. Instead, what I would say is, all right, if I cut this in half right here, uh, this, this would be if I broke it into like even pieces, but we know the center of mass can't be here because there's way more mass below it than there is above it. So the center of mass is probably somewhere like right there, closer to the base, um, but um, you know, not right on the base. So those are, that's kind of how you find the center of mass. Uh, and an important piece is that the center of mass of an object uh, is actually the, the most perfect thing. Um, perfect seems like the wrong word. Uh, it's the ideal for a lot of our physics problems. When we use our equations, we're not predicting the position of every piece of the object. We're usually predicting where the center of mass will, will end up with like kinematics and forces and energy and such things. Um, so um, that actually goes to, do I have time for the spherical cow joke? I don't think I have time for the spherical cow joke. So some other time I'll tell you the hilarious joke about the spherical cow. Let's go to the next question. We have an astronaut who ropes an ast uh, asteroid and uh, he's pulling it towards himself. Um, I want to know what happens to each object, the astronaut and the asteroid, uh, and where are they going to meet? Uh, so this is, again, not surprisingly, going to be a center of mass question. If you imagine that this asteroid is probably much more massive than the, or, or even if it's like the same size, it's going to be a lot heavier because it's made out of solid rock and the, the astronaut's not. Uh, so it, it's going to be more massive and the center of mass is going to be closer to that asteroid than it is to the, the man, to the astronaut. So as he's pulling it towards himself, what we can imagine is even though in his perspective, he's pulling on that rope, what's really happening is he's probably being pulled towards that asteroid. Just like if I tied a rope to like the back of a car and you were pulling on it, you'd probably be stepping forward with it, not pulling the car towards yourself. But in space, there's no force of friction that keeps that asteroid in place. So that asteroid will be moving towards him. But because of the differences in mass, uh, while he's accelerating pretty quickly pulling on that, that asteroid's pull, uh, going towards him very slowly. But they're both moving. Uh, and so he's not going to end up going all the way over to where the asteroid started. And obviously the asteroid's not going to come straight to him. Instead, they're going to meet at wherever the center of mass of the two objects are. Uh, so it's probably super close to the asteroid because the asteroid's much bigger. Uh, the asteroid's not going to be accelerating very fast, whereas he's accelerating fast. So his smaller mass is going to move quickly. The big mass is going to move slowly, but they're going to both meet right there at the center of mass. Uh, so one thing that I want you to, to learn, to take away from this, uh, is that if there are no external forces, the, I'm going to abbreviate it, the center of mass doesn't move. So there were no external forces acting on that asteroid uh, astronaut problem. There was just the internal force of tension as they were both exerting equal opposite forces. Uh, so because of that, even though the two pieces of the system moved, their center of mass had to stay in the exact same location. And there's definitely going to be questions that, that, um, that quiz you and, and, and test you on that particular idea. So um, if you have objects with more than one piece that are exerting these uh, internal forces on each other, Find your center of mass and make sure whatever your answer that you give at the end has the same center of mass. Our, our last problem, we have a missile that's being launched and it's on track to hit something 30 kilometers away, probably like a high school or something. Uh, 
uh, outcrash occurs, and half the missile ends up hitting five kilometers or 25 kilometers away instead of 30. So it goes boop and it hits there. So the question is, where does the other half hit? Uh, and um, the big takeaway uh, for this piece uh, that I want you guys to realize is that the physics that we've been learning, uh, the kinematic equations and all those things, they match what the center of mass of a system will always do. So the center of mass of the system, we said it was going to be 30 kilometers away when we originally planned this, when we were originally calculated or whatever. Then that malfunction happened and half of it landed at 25. Well, the center of mass still has to be at 30. So the other piece must have to land out here at 35 kilometers so that our, oops, that's kilograms, uh, at 35 kilometers, so that our center of mass of our system is still right in the middle. We got half of it at 25, half of it at 35. That means the center of mass is still at 30, right where we expect it to be. So uh, the, the last takeaway here is uh, to use uh, the center of mass, center of mass to solve multi-part problems simply. Um, what I mean by that is uh, you guys already have ways to simplify your problems. You have uh, basic equations, with kinematics and forces and energy, blah, 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 uh, that let us conceptually figure out what the center of mass of the system will do. It's a much harder problem to try and keep track of every piece of our, prob uh, of our uh, object as it goes, goes down. Instead, use these equations to predict where the center of mass falls. And then if you have multiple pieces or you have multiple objects, then figure out where they fall relative to the center of mass to keep your center of mass in the same location. Uh, it, it's actually a much uh, easier way of solving the problem than it would be if we had tried to do something where mathematically we, we wrote kinematic equations for like up to the point where they exploded apart, and then we used new kinematic equations to predict each of the objects. That would actually be a lot harder than what we just did by saying, all right, one piece lands at 25, other one lands at 35. So, uh, that's the big ideas that I want you guys to get out of center of mass. Uh, it's really just a way of looking at problems um, and, and simplifying them initially, and then realizing how to use that simplification to then expand back out what happens to each piece of the system instead of as the system of a whole. So thank you very much for watching, and have a great day or evening, whatever time it is. Have a great one.